Next thing we want to do is actually add the icon. So we've got this uh, background and then we've also got this kind of repeat icon that we're actually using for the currency converter uh, logo type thing. Then finally we've got just basic text down here at the bottom that says currency converter. Um, so this is what we're actually going to be building towards in this lesson. We'll be setting this up as a new component. So to do that, I'll go over to my editor and inside of my components directory, I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder and I'm going to call this logo. As with any component, we're gonna set up my default style. So we've got my index.js, we've got the styles.js. Then we're also going to create a component called logo.js. Something else we need to do is actually copy the image assets for uh, this component into it. So looking at this image, it might not look like it, but this actual repeat icon, that's a separate image, and then this background is a separate image. And we're doing that just so we can easily change the tint color of this icon in the center and not touch the white background at all. So to do that, uh, I'm going to open up Finder for me, and then I've got the different images here in a uh, my example project. So I'm going to go ahead and copy those. Uh, show, not that. I'm going to um, reveal in Finder. Okay, and then inside of my logo, logo directory, I'll go ahead and paste those images that I need uh, for this. So then if we look at the images quickly, you can just see we've got uh, the background.png and then we've got the three different pixel den densities and we've also got the logo again at the three different pixel densities. All these image assets are available to you in the actual lesson below. Let's go ahead and set up the image exports for this. So we're going to say import uh, logo from logo and this is happening in the index.js file in the logo directory and we're also going to import styles from dot forward slash styles and then we can go ahead and export them and everything's set up good to go for us to actually use this. Let's also uh, go to the styles file and just set up the boilerplate we need for this. So I'm going to import e style sheet from react native extended style sheet and I'm going to ex export default e style sheet dot create and we'll actually take care of styling in a moment. Now we can actually go ahead and actually start building this logo component. And if we look at the reference image, uh, we can kind of figure out what are the elements that go into actually building this up. So we know we've got a text element down here. And then as I discussed before, this image is going to be its own image. And then we've got this uh, background image as well, which means this uh, smaller icon is going to be a child of this larger icon. And then finally, because we need to export a single component rather than an array of components, we're going to have to wrap everything in a view. So we know what we're going to actually use to uh, import. So we can say import React from React because we need to use that anytime we use JSX in a file. And then we're going to import our components. And we know we've got a view, image, and we've also got text. And our component right now is not going to have any state, so we can just use a stateless component, so I'll say const logo is equal to a function, and then just like before we'll use parentheses to just implicitly return a component from this. We'll set up our last piece of boilerplate and that's going to be export default logo. Then in here, as I said before, we need to make sure we wrap all of our components in a view so that we're actually only returning one component from this logo component. And inside of here, we're going to have our first image, and that's going to uh, not be a self-closing one because it's going to take another image as a child. So then in here, we'll have another image, and this will represent our actual repeat icon. Finally, we'll have our text that will say currency converter. Last thing we need to do before we actually return this and style it is actually require our images. So if we look at the images directory we set up, you can see we've got this background.png and we've got the logo.png. To actually get the images, we need to specify our source. So that's going to be a prop. And then inside of that prop, we can actually use require. And then we want to specify the path relative uh, to the images. So we'll say dot forward slash images. And this is going to be background.png. And then if we go down to 
this one, which is going to be the actual logo. We can do the same thing. This time we'll say require dot forward slash images logo dot png. Close this. So the component should be all set up. We can go ahead and try to render it. It's not going to be pretty, but at least we'll have something to start working off of. So we're going to say import logo from dot dot slash components uh, logo. And then we can go ahead and render this. And there's no uh, children that this takes or any props. So we don't need to pass those. We'll just return the actual logo itself. So you can see this is all just one big mess and clearly not what we want at this point. So to do that, we'll actually go ahead and start styling. So we'll jump back into the logo file. And first thing we want to do is just center align everything. So I'm going to create a new style. I'm going to say style is equal to styles.container. Uh, make sure we actually import, import styles from styles. And then we can go to the actual styles file and define that. So inside of the eStyleSheet.create, I'm going to say container. And then we're just going to say align item. So align everything uh, within this container. Uh, actually, I need to make sure this is align items with an S. OK, and you can see that inside of here, we've got this um, text centered horizontally. Next, we want to do is actually set up this background image to be the correct size. and the size it's going to be is actually half of whatever the device width is. So first off, we'll set up the container image style property. And we can actually start assigning things. Uh, something else we're going to do is actually make sure this icon is centered vertically and horizontally within it. So to do that, we want to say align item center. And we're also going to say justify content center. So justify content is going to take care of the vertical align items is going to take care of the horizontal. Then we want to specify the width and that's we'll just say this is going to be uh, image width. And then we know if you look at the dimensions of the image, it's actually uh, same height, same width. So we're going to specify the height and the width and it's going to be image width. So how do we actually set up this image width uh, to be exactly half of whatever the dev device width is? be it an iPhone 4 or you know some giant Android device. So up here we'll say const image width and then there's something we want to import and that's going to be dimensions. If I can type it out from React Native. And when we use the dimensions we can go ahead and say dimensions.get window so that'll give us the actual window the application is running in and then from that we actually have the width we've got the height and we might have a few other things but all we care about is the width here and as I said before we know we want the actual image to be half of uh, whatever the size of the device is so I can save that that won't give us any errors hopefully all right good to go now we need to actually apply this container image style to uh, this component. So we've got our wrapper component and I'm going to say style is equal to styles dot container image. Uh, save that and you can see that okay things are starting to come together a bit but this logo inside is way too big and we want this uh, logo within this uh, actual background to be half of whatever that image width is and we know we've got the actual image width the variable available to us. So before we go back to the styles uh, file, let's go ahead and actually assign the property. So on the logo image component, we're going to say styles.image. And then we can go and actually define that. So inside of the uh, image component, or inside of the styles file, we're going to create a new style property called image. And in here, we want to specify the width. We don't need to worry about the height. But as I said before, we want the image width to be half of whatever the container image is, uh, regardless of what the actual size of the screen is. So I'm going to say the width is image width divided by 2. So things are starting to come together, but as you can see here, we've got the image clipping on the top, we've got it clipping on the bottom, and then on the logo we've got the image clipping on the left and the right. And to do that, we can actually go to the logo we can specify how we want the image to actually be resized because it, we're not using the natural size of the images so we need to tell it how to resize it 
And to do that, we've got a prop called resize mode on an image component. And for this, we're going to want to pass uh, contain, and that's just going to contain the aspect, uh, contain the image within the area that it's actually given to uh, render in. So if I pass resize mode to each of those, you can see that now we've got the image. It's no longer being clipped in a weird way. The image is exactly half the width of the device, regardless of what it is. And then finally, the logo is going to be half of whatever the, the background image actually is. So our images are all set up. Last thing we need to do is take care of this ugly currency converter that's pretty hard to see. Uh, so I'm just going to go down here and I will say style is equal to styles dot text. And then we've got that set up so we can actually go to our styles directory, our styles file, we'll set up our new style text. And looking at our base image, we know the, the font needs to be white, it needs to be bigger, it needs to be bolder. Uh, all of those things in mind, we can actually start going ahead and setting this up. So we'll say, first off, font weight, and we want it to be bold. We can actually pass, just like in CSS, different values um, to specify the font weight. So we'll pass a string of font weight 600. We're going to say the font size, which is going to be a number, and that is going to be 28. And finally, let's add a little bit of letter spacing as well, and that'll just kind of bring those letters together just a bit. And we're going to say this is going to be negative 0.5. So let's save it and see what we've got. So we can see we've got the text, the right size, pretty close up here, and it's obviously not the right color. Uh, so first thing we'll do is say margin top, and we'll just give a little bit of uh, margin on the top and just say 20. Yeah, that, that's a bit much, so let's actually bump this down to 15. And then finally we want to set the actual background color and that's going to be pure white. Actually, no, uh, since this is text, we want to actually change the text color, not the background color. So rather than using background color, we're just going to specify color. All right, and here our logo component is all set up. Last thing I want to do, um, I don't like leaving the actual hex colors within the application itself. Just, I want to keep everything contained in one place when it comes to color, so it's easy to update things, e easy to slightly modify them. So I'm going to create a new variable We'll just point this to white. And then if I go to my index.js, so app slash index.js, go ahead and create a new variable here. I'm going to call this white, and that's just going to be uh, this pure white that we're using. So if I save that, everything, the styles build when the application builds, save it, and then uh, that's built as well.